only two ingredients to accelerate your hair growth. And the first ingredient is cloves. Now I'm using a 25 gram bag. I'm only going to use about two tablespoons of this so you don't have to toast the whole bag. So here I'm just toasting it on a cast iron pan. You can use any pan on medium high heat. Now you're gonna want to make a nice sort of flat surface with the cloves on the pan because you want them to cook evenly. Now this is not something you want to leave on and just forget about it. You want to be turning very often because it toasts very fast and it cooks very fast. I'm not going to be doing the double boiler method and I'm not pouring oil into the pan. I'm just getting out the flavor, the natural oils, and this will help it actually infuse better into the oil. And if you want to know when it's done, you're, start, you're gonna start hearing like popping sounds and you also notice maybe a little bit of smoke once you see the tiniest bit of smoke turn the burner off mix it up quickly so that everything is evenly toasted then you want to get it off the stove and it is ready for crushing now you can blend it if you want or you can use them whole like this but I like a happy medium so I'm going to crush it in a marble motor you can use any kind of stone wooden motor so that you can just pound it and if you want you can blend it but like I said I don't want my oil to turn brown and I just find that crushing it gives me the best effect I get the best infusion from it while not having any bits of my hair and not having to sieve it through like a cheesecloth you can just use any regular strainer when you're ready to do it so here I'm going in and just roughly crushing it what I want is some of it to be powdery some stems to still remain so that I can get all the benefits that I want without getting any bits or making the oil brown this is just my way of doing it there are so many ways to make clove oil and there's I believe a lot of videos on YouTube with different ways on how to make clove oil so you can go ahead and watch that I will also be talking about the main benefits of cloves for your hair later on in the video but for now let's concentrate on how to make it so this is what you want your crushed mixture to look like when you're done and it's time to use oil now I am using avocado oil plain avocado oil and it is a hundred percent virgin avocado oil you can use olive oil you can use coconut oil I don't like coconut oil and I don't recommend it but if your hair loves it you can use it you can use grapeseed oil any carrier oil that your hair likes you can go ahead and use that do not use essential oils because those are too potent you have to dilute those so avocado oil is my favorite so that's what I'm going with I used a half a cup just less than half a cup and now that is half a tablespoon or about 7.5 grams and I am putting two heaped teaspoons two heaped half tablespoons so basically one and a half tablespoons about 15 grams of crushed cloves that is all you need you can save the rest for later or if you're making a bigger batch than me you can use the whole pack so that's what it looks like as you can see I make sure I get a mixture of the powdery section and the kind of stemmy section then I'm just mixing that up and the oil is almost done there's just one more little step if you want you can do the double boiler method for this one I actually just like to put it in hot water. So I will close the lid and I like to keep my oils in an airtight container because it lengthens the shelf life and makes sure that it doesn't go bad. So that is what the oil looks like when it's done before we put it in the hot water. So this water was boiling about 10 minutes ago and so now it's not blazing hot. It's not gonna break the glass. It's just hot enough to heat the oil without denaturing any of the nutrients in the oil. And about an hour later, I took it out of the water when it was cold and that's basically the oil done. Now it is time for application. Now, I like to leave my clove oil to sit for a longer time. That is why you can see I didn't strain it or decant it because I'm letting it sit for like a couple weeks. So I'm just going to be using it until I think it's matured enough for my liking. So the first way is just to put a couple drops of clove oil on your fingertips only and then push your fingers into your scalp and then gently massage that oil onto your scalp. This is for if you don't like your scalp or your hair feeling oily, if you have fine hair or if this is maybe the third time in the week that you're oiling your hair so you feel like you don't need too much oil, you just want to get a little bit of clove oil on your scalp and also enjoy the benefits. The second way is how I usually oil my hair and how you can oil your hair if you don't mind your hair feeling oily. 
I have thick coarse hair so it won't make my hair feel oily but also you can also do this if you want to wash it out the next morning I will address this a little later but this is just how I put it I'm just going to part my hair in about three sections and put a mildly generous amount of cold of clove oil on my scalp and then I will go ahead and massage the same way I massage the back part of my hair to just make sure that everything is evenly distributed across my scalp and also evenly worked in for the maximum benefit. Lots of research has been done and some of the research I'll be using is from a dermatologist named Dr. Sangvi. Cloves contain many nutrients and antioxidants, but the most important one is called eugenol. You may have heard of this ingredient before because it's usually one of the main ingredients in products you'd receive from the dentist when you're suffering from a toothache. It is the same thing. It is called eugenol. Now in terms of hair growth, it is antimicrobial, antiseptic, and anti-inflammatory. Along with this, it also has potassium, iron, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin C, and more, including lots of antioxidants. Now, how do we know this is actually good for hair? Well, our scalp usually gets inflamed by so many different things because you're being violent with it, because you're just doing stuff to it, like braiding it. As you can see, I have a blow out braid out <laughs> our scalp gets inflamed by so many different things even dandruff can cause inflammation because it's probably making your scalp a little itchy it's making you scratch so many things can cause inflammation and inflammation can really stunt your hair growth because if your scalp is inflamed then your follicles don't have the correct environment for them to thrive as they should now how do you know that the eugenol actually works for hair and not just for teeth and other things well if you look in many popular shampoos conditioners and lots of products that are just made for hair if you look in the ingredients list they contain some kind of clove oil clove extract or eugenol itself something else that the clove oil does and the eugenol does is it actually stimulates hair growth and increases blood flow to your scalp now I've mentioned this many times on this channel, your hair is not a vital organ. So you need to do a little bit of extra when you eat food. If you eat a little bit of extra protein, that's what's gonna go to your hair if you have enough. If you are lacking, it's not gonna go to your hair first because it's not vital. So if you use something that is stimulating on your scalp, it'll promote blood flow to that area, which will carry more oxygen and nutrients to your roots, to your scalp, and this will in turn promote hair growth. A very important thing about clove oil that distinguishes it from a lot of oils out there is that it also has anti-androgenic properties, which means if you are suffering from some kind of androgenetic alopecia, androgenic alopecia, which is just a more scientific name for male pattern baldness or female pattern baldness, this has qualities that can actually slow down the process. Clove oil also helps prevent dandruff, it helps fight frizz, it also helps add shine. Now preventing dandruff is a very good thing as well because prevention of dandruff means less itching, less inflammation, and a healthy scalp to thrive and help your hair grow to its fullest potential. Another thing clove oil and eugenol helps with is it prevents premature graying. If your hair is already all gray, it can't reverse the graying process. But if your hair is in the process of going gray or you're starting to notice a couple gray hairs popping up, this can stop the process or at least really slow it down so that you don't keep getting more gray hairs. It also will not change the color of your hair because it just enhances the natural pigment of your hair. So if you are naturally blonde, whatever the true pigment of your hair is when it's in its healthiest state, this is what clove oil is going to promote. If you bleach your hair, it can make your hair darker because you've literally taken the pigment out of your hair. But if your hair is like a dark brown, it will make it a richer, darker brown. If your hair is black, it will make it richer. It's not going to change the color of your hair and it's not going to darken your hair. It's just going to enhance the natural color of your hair to its true fullest potential. Now for some questions. Before you comment with any questions, listen to this part because these are always the most common questions I get asked whenever I make an oil video, so I'm going to address them here. And if you have more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. The first one is how long is the shelf life? Now luckily for clove oil, the shelf life is very long because the cloves that I use and that are mostly widely available are already completely dry. So you're not really adding any water content into the oil as you saw in the mixture which means you can basically keep it as long as it takes for your oil to naturally expire. So if you have a bottle of oil, look at the expiry date. If it says six months, if it says one year, that is basically the shelf life of your oil. 
provided that you keep it in a dark, cool area, which is the next question, where do you store the oil? You store the oil in a dark, cool area that is not filled with moisture. For example, you don't want to keep it you don't want to keep it in the kitchen where you're always cooking and the stove is heating up the room and there's vapor. You don't want to keep it in the shower or in the bathroom because again, it gets hot, there's vapor. You can keep it in your room, just in a dark corner. You can keep it like in the living room in some kind of cupboard, maybe where you keep plates or something like that. As long as it's a cooler area, you don't have to put it in the fridge and sometimes the oils will might become like a little bit thick and difficult to use. You have to warm it up every single time you want to use it. So you don't have to put it in the fridge unless you live in an extremely hot climate where you have no cool area in the house. Then you can just put it in the fridge, maybe like on the door so it doesn't have to get very cold. The next question is how long do I wait before I use it? I believe I addressed this earlier on, but you can use it immediately, but I suggest you leave some clothes in it so that it can continue to infuse. Now this will depend on how much you made. If you made a lot, it can infuse for weeks and it will continue to get stronger and stronger. If you if you made very little, like maybe only for a max of five to 10 uses, then maybe you want to leave it overnight. It is up to you. I can use it immediately, but then just leave it in the bottle and let it continue to infuse for like a couple weeks. It's really up to you, but it'll be effective from the first day that you make it. The next question is how often can I use it? Now you can use this anywhere from one to four times a week. If you like, you can use it every day, but I don't recommend that because too much of everything is a bad thing. And if you're using the tiniest bit, possibly you could use it every day, but what you can be the most consistent with is anywhere from one to four times. So you can go two to three times, whichever you think you will, you will manage to stay the most consistent with is the time you should use it. But at least a minimum of once a week would be effective. So now, can you leave it in? Can you wash it out? Do you have to leave it in? Do you have to wash it out? Here's the thing. If your hair gets really oily very fast or you just hate the feeling of oil being in your hair, you can wash it out but leave it at least for a minimum of 30 minutes under heat. So put the oil in your hair, go under a plastic cap, go under heat for a minimum of 30 minutes, then you can go ahead and wash it out. What I recommend is if let's say you're doing something tomorrow, you want to take it out, what I would suggest is put the oil in your hair at night before you go to bed and then wash it out in the morning. Then at least you've had like six to eight hours of the oil sitting in your hair and it can do its job effectively. And you can go on with your regular routine as you usually do. And then if you leave it in, how long can you leave it in? You can leave it in as long as you for as long as your next wash day. So for me, I wash my hair about once a week, so I would leave it in my hair for about a week. If you don't want to leave it in a week, go to my previous option. You can wash it out the next morning. Another very popular question is, how long till I can see results? Now, this all depends on your genetics, your consistency, and if you're taking care of your hair in the first place, okay? But I will say, you will start to notice results anywhere from one week to six weeks. It all depends on you. I cannot tell you how long it's going to work on you. Even if I said, oh, it worked for me in two weeks, I saw a huge difference. It doesn't matter because on your own hair, it might be different. It might be a result in four days or a result in four weeks. Just note that it is not magic, okay? It's not gonna give you six inches of hair overnight or else we would all be millionaires, okay? I also want six inches of hair overnight. It's just not gonna happen, but it will tremendously help your hair. Can it be used on children? Now this is quite a potent oil again. It has very little side effects and it is 100% natural, but just because something is 100% natural, it doesn't mean that it will have zero side effects. As well as if you have any medical issues, if you are in, on any medication, if you have anything like low blood pressure or any heart symptoms, whenever you want to use anything potent, I would suggest you speak to your healthcare professional. If you have a young child, you most likely have a pediatrician or a doctor who you can speak to. Just confirm with them to make sure that it's okay because while... I have discovered that it has barely any side effects. It is still better to be safe than sorry. So ask your healthcare professional to advise you on that. Can you mix it with any other oils and herbs, like let's say rosemary oil, tea tree oil, lavender oil, whatever oil you like, or using different oils like avocado oil, coconut oil, olive oil, whatever. I would suggest you only mix it with other things if you know that the things you're mixing it with already work for your hair. If, for example, I love rosemary oil, 
if you say, I've heard that rosemary oil is amazing and clove oil is also amazing, why don't I put them together and use them? The thing is, if you've never used both of them, you won't know whether they work well together, whether only one is working or whether only one is affecting you terribly, maybe one is making your hair dry, you won't know which is which. So if you've never tried whatever you want to mix it with, make a pure oil. Just make the oil I made in this video and see if your hair likes it. And then if you have another oil that your hair really likes already, like rosemary oil or tea tree oil or moringa oil, you can mix them all together and figure out the perfect balance so that you can get multiple be multiple benefits at once. But again, if you've never tried the other ones, do not mix them together. Let's say after listening to all this, you are either not convinced, you hate the smell, or you've tried it before and you feel like it just doesn't work for you. Nothing works for every single person. So if it doesn't work for you, move on and find something that will offer you similar benefits like rosemary oil. I actually have a recipe as well on how to make DIY rosemary oil or like my ultimate rosemary oil. And if you'd like to know how to make that, you can just watch this video right here and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.